This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Ooh, today I'm going to talk to you about the endless Chanel drama that is the shopping experience of a Chanelaholic. So, you remember I purchased a Chanel foldable tote bag and I unboxed it on my channel and right after unboxing it, I realized that it was flawed. Well, and I promised you in the follow-up video, hey, I'm going to let you know what happens in the future with uh, this whole situation. Oh, well, the future is now, and I'm going to update you right now about it. But before we get to all the details and the nitty-gritty, juicy substance of this drama, might I remind you that if you do like my content but haven't yet, now is the time to subscribe to my channel, push that subscription button. And uh, you can even push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Deco Balls spelled together on Patreon. And become a patron today and gain access to also extra perks. And thumb up this video. Let the YouTube algorithm know that we're doing something right over here. Thank you to all my patrons and uh, members who have already pledged. You help sustain the fashion bunker. Thank you so much. This video is being filmed live in front of a virtual audience. I have my co-reviewers uh, or co-drama uh, tours <laughs> um, live in the chat section next to me. So let's get straight to it. Okay, you guys. So let me move to the side and show you the first photo, right? So this is the bag that I purchased, okay? I purchased this bag um, two weeks ago, is it now? Uh, I've been, I ordered it through Chanel, through my sales associate, and I've been waiting for it for many, many months. It's like, it's, it, it took a long time to get this little foldable. It's a tiny little bag. It falls under the category of a small leather good. It's foldable. You receive it in this leather, like a wallet on chain, like a micro wallet on chain. And then you open the wallet on chain and the bag is sewn onto it. You can't detach that nylon tote from the bag, right? It's sewn onto it and uh, it's folded inside of the pouch of the leather bag. And so I unboxed it on my channel. Uh, up here in the cart section is the link to the unboxing video. And I was in, I unboxed it live just as I'm filming this video live. And I showed the details of it. I showed how you fold it, how you unpack it, how you can wear it. There's also a wonderful way to wear this bag. You could wear, you could just hold it by the handles, but you could also wear it crossbody because that chain that you see in that photo, you can actually pull it out. Well, it's always out the chain, actually. It's just like a wallet on chain, chain situation. It's attached underneath the flap. You can't detach the chain. Um, you could wear it crossbody and then have it just hang as a pouch on the side. It's a very interesting way of dealing with this bag now but you can then after unboxing it i realized that the bag had a production flaw so i made immediately a follow-up video also up here in the cart section up above you can see the link to that video but also in the description box down below a link to it where i described the problem with this bag that i noticed uh upon unboxing it and that would be that you see that flap with a double C. So that flap, actually, when you open it, the printed canvas tote has a hole cut into it and leather uh, sewn onto it on both sides in a circular form. Why is this done? It is done so that the back side of the leather pouch, when the flap, when the top flap fall, falls over the nylon, it clicks into place with the leather bag that's behind the nylon and there's that hole in between and the two magnets clip together and that's how the top pouch how the how the top flap holds on to the back of the of the bag right so this particular leather circle is sewn on to that hole in the nylon and that's where the trouble lies because the actual, um, what you might call it, the actual um, nylon, the way it's cut out, either the hole in the nylon was too big 
or the nylon was shifted too low as the leather ring was sewn onto it. So let me show you the next image. This is the problem. <laughs> like point there, right there. Uh, at uh, the bottom side, you see the, the nylon sticking out from underneath the um, leather ring. That material hasn't been sewn properly into the bag. Not only was it not sewn in properly, but they did not hem it. It wasn't hemmed before it was sewn into the leather or before the leather ring was attached on top and then sewn. So my particular copy of this bag, by copy, I mean, you know, they made, I don't know how many of these they made, 100, 200 worldwide. So my particular one had an issue of the, of the shifted nylon. But I'm thinking, even if it wasn't shifted, since the nylon isn't hemmed, if you fill the little nylon bag, the weight of the bag is going to pull on the bag. And uh, we're going to get the same issue with that nylon pulling out from the weight of the bag. Because as you can see from this photo, the stitching around the caviar leather is very close to the border. And there's not much space left there. So I'm thinking that nylon cannot have so much space in there underneath that leather to withstand pull from underneath the nylon when the bag is full. So it's, it's I, I feel like no matter what you do, even if it's sewn in properly, but not hemmed, there's no hemline, it, it's going to, the weight of the bag might tug at the nylon and hence um, pull out that thin nylon from underneath the leather and make it, you know, like this again. So I'm thinking even if I get a new copy of this bag, I think this is a production flaw, production issue. It wasn't thought through properly and I'm going to have the same issue with it. So, okay. So anyway, this is my, these are my thoughts. I take the photos. This is one of the photos. Let me show you another one. I take photo, close-up photos of the bag. Now you see in this photo, you see underneath uh, that hole is the inner side of the pouch. That little metal thing poking out there is the magnet that then attaches to the magnet of the top flap. And you see the on the side all the way, like on this side, on this end here, you have that nylon poking out. Let me show you the next photo. A little bit more detailed you see it even there and then the next one with my finger to, to show you also for reference like how big this circle circular leather bit is next to my thumb and then you see me holding that nylon that was not caught in by the actual sewing uh, of the leather caviar circle or ring so I take these four pictures that I've sh shown you of the broken bag and I send them to my sales associate right away, right after uh, filming uh, uh, the, the past video. So I can now take away the photo. Okay. So now imagine, you know, I sent my sales associate a text message with the photos and I said, hey, sweetie, just unbox the bag and uh, well, we have an issue. Uh, and uh, it's it's flawed. Um, would you happen to have, you know, and I was very clear in my message. I said, hey, I don't want reparation. Um, what alternatives do we have? Like I, by this time, it was so hard to get this bag. It's probably already sold out everywhere. So um I could, you know, I've already pre-ordered other things from Chanel, so I could just get a voucher and, you know, just use that to pay other stuff that's coming in or a refund. Um, and uh, so, uh, so she says, so she answers me that um, I should come by the boutique and uh, see you know, with them what to do. But because of this whole lockdown situation, 
she's not working full time as she used to. She's working less. So like I would have to wait a week. And I was like, I ain't waiting a week. <laughs> so I had the live stream on Saturday already on Tuesday. I was at the Chanel boutique and I was like, OK, I know that my sales associate that's responsible for this bag is coming in only towards the end of that week. But I can't wait and I don't want you to use that time against me because it took me over a week to bring the bag back. I don't want you to think like I've been using it or something. So you can see I just purchased it literally like two days ago or three days ago and I'm bringing it back because it has a flaw. It has all its stickers on it. Like I know that my sales associate isn't here and it would be better if I waited for my sales associate to be there because she dealt with me. She knows exactly what's going on. But just to let you guys know, I just want to bring it back immediately. So you're also quicker in returning the bag because I would also like a replacement. And the sooner I bring back this bag and the sooner you can start looking for a replacement and um, the better the chances are that the bag is not sold out everywhere. So they said, OK, uh, they looked, inspected the bag and they said, we accept the return. This does look like it's our mistake. It's a production flaw. Uh, but uh, wait for your sales associate to deal with ordering the other bag because I'm like, OK, fine. So we're wasting more time. The, the bag might be sold out by the time she comes back to work at the end of the week. The bag might be gone everywhere. So I was like, OK, whatever. At least I was super um, relaxed, not relaxed, like I was super happy that they accepted the return without trouble because I've gone through some horror stories with returns at Chanel. Um, check out card section up above the link to to that uh, odyssey uh, that happened a couple of years ago that was like a six part or five five or six part uh drama thing because i would ha i had to keep updating every couple of weeks when something new happened about that specific bag that i returned back then but anyway that's a whole other can of worms so back to this particular uh spring summer 2021 foldable tote bag drama so they gave me a, a voucher like a um yeah it's a voucher you could call it a voucher uh, for the worth of the bag uh and I did not fight for money back because I, I already have stuff I pre-ordered there. It's like, I, I'm going to give them my money anyway. It's, it, I, you know, I'm like, give me a voucher. <laughs> it's fine. You know, just, and they did. And they were really very, they, you know, I, they, there was no convincing needed. They saw, they immediately saw that this is not something I could have done. They also know me for so many years. I treat these bags like they were made out of, like they were, newborns you know with like uh, holy anyway so but then i don't hear from my sales associate and i'm like okay now i need to like figure this out because now i'm sitting on this voucher and i have no news about the bag i have no news about my pre-order uh, my other pre-ordered piece well pre-ordered big word it's more like i asked my sales associate if she could order me other pieces as well, no news. So it's not a pre-order, you know, it's, it's something that's already been delivered to boutiques and she's trying to source them out from other boutiques for me. So I, I'm not hearing back about the foldable bag. I'm not hearing back about that other thing that I uh, asked her if she could order for me and time is passing, but I have the voucher. Now time is passing. And as time passes, I start, uh, asking my contacts and my other friends and fellow Chanel collectors out there asking like, Hey, has anybody purchased this bag? Does anybody else have the same issue with this bag? Has anybody else had to return this bag? You know, I'm trying to figure stuff out here. And, um, couple of questions were sent out, a couple of DMs were sent out, and a couple of uh, um, answers returned. And very fascinating uh, that um, uh, two people have had issues with this same bag, okay? One person had the same issue on the ring uh, with the nylon coming out, uh, however, I do not know if this person was using the bag a lot or if it was something that this person noticed only after I asked. 
So maybe the flaw was there from the get-go, but they didn't notice until I didn't ask them to look specifically for that. And the other person said the bag feels very, very fragile. Uh, and um, the ring part in particular seems like the nylon there is hanging by a loose thread. So I'm just about to write to my sales associate who's still not answering me. Like, hey, I know you're off of work until the end of the week, but I was just about to write, you know, like, but um, maybe don't try ordering the bag again because it seems as though this is an issue with this production. All of these bags have the same issue. Now, before I decided to send the message, I receive a message from her <laughs> saying, Hey, Deco, great news. I managed to source out another uh, foldable tote for you. Should I just book your voucher in and send the bag over to you? And I was shocked. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, oh, God, okay. Mm. At this point, she already ordered the a replacement bag. And it already arrived. And she, and I had the feeling she wants this to be done quick. Like, you know, I'll book your voucher in and I'll send you over the bag. I'm like, I, I was like, wait, hold on. Have you inspected the bag? Mind you, I trust them, but I, I never fully trust anybody. So I took photos of the authenticity card uh, number, the authentication number of the bag, because I was thinking... You're not going to trick me. You're not going to send this bag for repairs and then try to give it back to me as a new one. Um, each bag has its own authenticity number. So I photographed authenticity number just so that I can, you know, check when they give me the new bag. I'm going to compare the numbers. Not that they gave me the same bag again. You know, <laughs> she clever. She ain't bone yesterday. Yeah. Anyway. So there's that, but I'm thinking, no, they probably ordered the bag again and they got it. But I was like, geez, that, that went too fast. This bag ain't sold out everywhere after all. Um, and other boutiques are very quick to send it over. There must be, usually boutiques are quite stingy with their own products from newer, from the newest collection. I know that Chanel hasn't been selling as much lately. So they're a bit more keen on just like moving the merch, you know, just selling it. So they would say yes to transfers much quicker than they did in the past. But I'm thinking, okay, so at this point, she has the bag in the boutique and is telling me, voucher and this and that. And I'm like, I need to win some time because, um, well, why? I'm thinking strategically here because I still haven't got an answer on that other transfer piece that I want. And if I tell her now, I don't want the that foldable bag anymore, then she might retaliate and say, oh, I can't order you the other thing you wanted. You know, transfer is not possible. So I'm like trying to... <laughs> to weigh out my losses here because it's also not good to sit on a voucher for too long because Chanel prices keep going up. So you your money on your voucher devalues with time. If you wait too long to exchange the voucher for some product, you're going to end up losing money because that same product is going to cost you more in three months because they keep going up in price. So it's like I need to... I don't want to just cash in, not cash in. I don't want to just exchange the voucher for anything. I want to exchange it for something that I really like. But I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And I also don't want to get people in trouble. I mean, like, you know, you go through the effort to reorder the bag for me. And while you are reordering the bag, you're not communicating with me. So there's lack of communication as well. Because I kept writing, but I wasn't getting any answers. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, I get a message. Hey, the bag is here now. Want to exchange the voucher and I send it over to you? Done, deal, done. I was like, no, 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 done, deal, done. We still have to talk about it. Like, And then I, I wrote her like, hey, can you inspect the bag? I got no answer about the ins bag inspection. But then I tried to play it cool, strategic. And I said, okay, uh, right. But I have the voucher here. Can you... 
just, you know, I, I have it with me. She's like, oh, you have the voucher with you? It's not in the store? I was like, no, they gave it to me. It's a printed paper. I took it home. She's like, oh, I can't do it then. And I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> I was like, oh, thank God, you can't do it. She's like, I can't do it because I need that paper. You need to bring it over. I need the material voucher to be able to put it in the system, tear it apart, and then you can exchange it for the bag. And then I said, oh, you know, it's a bit too dangerous with, the, you know, the lockdown situation, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to... You know, I was like, listen, I don't want to come in two times. Um, let's wait and see first if that other product that I wanted, if that is going to come in, if you get the okay for that. And then I could come in just one time instead of having to come in two times. So I'll come, you know, is it possible? You know, let's wait and see. Uh, if you can get that other product in, and if you can, I'm just going to come in once. And on that one day that I come in, I can inspect the foldable pouch. If it's good, I'll get give you the voucher, exchange it, and then I'll buy the other product. <laughs> so she says, um, and to that question, she answered immediately, you see, because I was like, aha. Uh -huh. And then the answer, because there was no other way to, to get an, oh, we can transfer this piece for you or not, this extra piece on top of the foldable tote, which is already there, right? It's already in the boutique waiting for me. So she answers immediately or soonish and says, oh, I got the okay for the transfer for the transfer of the other product. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't stress yourself. Come in just once. I'll let you know as soon as that other product arrives. And I was like, perfect. Why? And... Why did I play it this way? Because I am still gathering information on the foldable bag, trying to figure out if anybody else has had issues with it, if there are people out there that have the foldable tote that have not had any issues with it. I'm weighing in the pros and the cons so that by the time I go back to the boutique, after that other product I ordered arrives, I can still go there and not lose that other product. Because if I went to the boutique and said to her, hey, I'm not going to take that foldable bag again because it's too risque. It's too risque. I've heard too many people saying that theirs got broken as well. Um, then she might have been like, yeah, okay, you know what? Too much of a hassle. I'm not going to keep ordering stuff for you. You know what I mean? So now I have both bags coming in, the foldable one and the other thing. And I'm going to be like, when I'm in the boutique, I have both of them there. And I'm going to be like inspecting to see if the foldable bag is okay. And if it's not okay, I'm going to be like, hey, by the way, uh, look, I've got this information from all these people. They all had the same issue with the bag. I'm so sorry that you reordered it for me, but like, it's just too risky. And I don't want to have to keep coming back to you every week and bringing you back another damaged foldable bag and you having to reorder it again. Like, I'm so sorry that you ordered it for me, but I'm super thrilled that I'm going to uh, buy this other thing that you ordered, you know? So it's kind of like a less of a damage. It's like less of damage for, for them because they ordered a bag that was sent to them, you know, probably with FedEx. It costs them money. With every time they get a transfer from one boutique to the other, that costs them money. It's not for free for them. So they, they weigh in very carefully what is worth it for them to actually order or not order. And I don't want to be that client that orders stuff. And then once the stuff arrives, I just don't pick it up. I'm not that person. So I want to have a very good reason when I don't pick something up. So right now we are stuck in this position where um, I have not heard from her uh, regarding the other bag. Um, and I have not heard from her <laughs> regarding, uh, the foldable bag because uh, this is the point. The foldable bag is not reserved just for me. It's reserved for me for a limited time. So if I don't pick it up within a limited time, it goes back into sale, obviously. So I have received confirmation that the foldable bag is reserved for me up to a certain date. And then on, in a separate message, I received, I received the message that the other product is also going to be coming in. But in the other message saying that the other product is coming in, I did not receive at the same time confirmation that the foldable bag reservation has been prolonged for me until that other product arrives. But I did receive a message from her, a third message saying, uh, you can come in just once 
when the other bag arrives. But I didn't receive the confirmation of the prolongation of the reservation of the foldable bag. I'm telling you, Chanel is drama, okay? It's a lot of drama. Anyway, first world drama, but drama nevertheless. So now I'm like thinking to myself, well, I'll just wait until I get a message from her telling me that that other product has arrived and then I'll figure out a way to get to the boutique safely. And uh, once I'm there, I'm going to openly tell her what the issue is with the foldable bag because throughout this entire situation, I never wrote her that I have had uh, contact with people who have had issues with that foldable bag as well because I don't want to alarm her either, you know. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. We're pokering. It's a poker game. <laughs> I want to have my options. And my options right now are I want to come to the boutique and I want to have the foldable bag there for me to inspect, the new one to inspect, and that other product there as well so that I could say, hey, you know what? I'm going to use my voucher for this other product. The other product is there for me already. Done. So I'm going to have to keep you updated in the next video as soon as I know, what, as soon as I receive information from her, whether or not that other product arrived and whether or not the foldable bag is still kept for me, next step would be to go to the boutique and inspect them, buy either, exchange one for the voucher and buy the other one, or just uh, use the voucher for the new thing that's arriving and do, and just forget about the foldable bag. That's That's where we are. That's where we are at at the moment. What do you guys say? Let me see in your uh, in the comments. A bummer, says Kira. Yeah, Jesus says, oh, cha, she do be playing games. Oh, she do be did done playing games. Uh, Debbie says, okay, so definitely a design flaw. I I believe it's a it's a design flaw. I I still need to see this other foldable one and try tucking at it and and understanding how the construction is because. I have also received some messages of people saying that they do not have issues with their bag. Um, Andrew says, LOL, taking the pick of the serial number to prevent picking up a repaired item and the lockdown to get the other bag. The queen is smart. <laughs> I ain't born yesterday. <laughs> Daniel says, is it not so much drama as a farce? How can they put you through so much nonsense? Yeah, because it's Chanel, darling. Daniel says, it is amazing that the error was not picked up in the quality control process. Oh, they don't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Quality control for all these houses is atrocious, says Andrew. Yeah, it certainly is. Quality control, it's a thing they do. <laughs> but not so much with seasonal people. With their classics, they still do quality control, although even there... There are issues, you got to be careful. But their seasonal pieces, especially when they're seen as novelty pieces in a way, editorial pieces, you know, they're not built to last as much as their classics. Sometimes they are built to last, but sometimes they are mood pieces, you know, they're more collector's items. And in that case, they're not meant to, you know, to carry all your groceries in them. Like, I, I understand that, Um to a certain degree, uh, but uh, certain functionalities of the bag, I think this bag might have just been designed too quickly and certain technicalities weren't taken into consideration properly because there was not enough time logistically to think out the dynamics, the physics of the bag once it's in use. I think that's more the issue here, that there was not enough time to think this bag through completely. Between designing it and sending it into production, something went wrong there possibly. Uh, so that's that, you guys. Um, uh, so I'm really curious to see what gonna happen, what ha happened, and what gonna did done happen in the future. Uh, it, um, but I'll keep you posted because at this point, they got my money. I have a voucher which I can't cash in for money. I can't get my money back, right? So I, you know, I'm I'm stuck with it. And the voucher, as I said, loses in. Um, in, in value with every price increase Chanel gets the voucher automatically lost in value so this is also something you got to be quick with the exchange you know Andrew says they are built for the nouveau riche and the rapper new rich Asian and Middle Eastern groups who are not used to inspecting pieces like Jacob they cut corners to snatch money shame oh yes it's a snatch game and not the RuPaul type of snatch game either 
Uh, Sidoni Sarah says, love you, Dacov. Love you too, sweetie. Daniel says, they must know that you are a significant figure <laughs> on YouTube and that Chanel buyers listen to you. Oh, Chanel doesn't care. They know. They know. But th they don't care. <laughs> like, it's like... You see, my worry is that they're just going to tell me one day, like, hey, we just don't want to sell anything to you anymore because, like, you make these, like, critical videos, you know? Uh, so we don't want to have you as a customer anymore. That could happen, too. Well, you best believe I'm going to make a video about it if that happens, but it can happen. Anyway, I hope it won't. But it's a possibility. I mean, you have the right to not sell something to somebody. You're not obliged to sell something to somebody in your store. You could decline a customer. Of course you can. It's not illegal. So, and you know. Anyway, it is what it is, you guys. If you like this video, thumb it up. Let the algorithm know where it's at. And uh, subscribe to my channel. You can also push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. And gain access to extra perks like this wonderful scrolling credits at the end of the video where your name is listed as a co-producer of The Fashion Bunker. Join me on Patreon today. Become a patron and also be listed here as well as gaining access to exclusive videos only available on pa Patreon and for Tier 2 members on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Oh, while we're talking about Chanel, you can also follow me on my Chanel dedicated and curated Instagram profiles. One is called Coco Chanel is in my house, dedicated to my Chanel collection, where you also get to see all the updates on all my new purchases and everything is going crazy bananas in the house of Chanel, including close up photos of all these bags and details and stuff like that. Uh, if you want to follow me on my other Instagram profile, that would be Coco Chanel Privé, all spelled together, dedicated to the life of Coco Chanel. Or you could follow me on my classic Crazy Bonkers Super Jacob Instagram account, all spelled together, where you get to see a bit of everything, really. Till next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.